So anyway, I do the OT3 thing. I get on it and I think, well, Hubbard said I nearly died doing it. And I think, well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the cause of epilepsy, these BTs and clusters. He called them BTs, which are body thetans, and clusters, which are a bunch of body thetans. And remember, you've got the E-meter, which I haven't even gone into. How many guys are familiar with the E-meter? It's their little device. It's like a lie detector, which every time I heard that when I was in, I'd say, oh, that's not true at all. You know, it's our religious device. But <laughs> the truth is, it is just like a, it, it, it is that. It measures resistance. And so you're using the E-meter, find, you have to locate these BTs, the body thetans, these dead spirits. You've got to <laughs> find out, anyway, it's too long to describe, go on the internet and read it, but it's really weird and you have to get rid of them, you have to get them to go away. And so you do this over and over and for me, I was just like deluding myself thinking I'm erasing epilepsy. That was all of what it was about for me. And you can talk to different people who did it, and they all each plugged it into their own personal thing of whatever it is. And, the, and Zeno, by the way, is locked inside of a mountain with electric beams, just so you know. <laughs> that was always a little weird to me, too. It's like, if he's so evil, why did you let him be locked inside of some mountain? Why not just 86 the guy, right? <laughs> but they had people called loyal officers who were making sure he was locked in the mountain. And some of the people that are real true believers think they're the loyal officers. So that's the other thing in Scientology. Dianetics actually got into it of earlier lifetimes, past lifetimes. And this is a bit back, but in 69 I get in, I'm a hippie, and I sit down in Denny's down in Alvarado, because that's where Scientology was back then, the celebrity center, and I sit down in Denny's, and this guy says, I had the most incredible session. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm Julius Caesar. <laughs> And I swear to God, I'm like, wow, I'm sitting with Julius Caesar. <laughs> I was like, this is incredible. You know, I'm like, wow, we're real. I could have never got that in medical school. It's a good thing I got in Scientology. <laughs> so then I talked to him for a while, and I said, you know, it's great meeting you. I'm going to pop over and see some other people. And I sit down at this other booth. It's a true story. And this guy says, had a great session. I said, really? What happened? He goes, I'm Julius Caesar. <laughs> and I'm like, I just met Julius Caesar. But I can't say that because that would invalidate his win. See, and that's a high crime. <laughs> See how that works? So even though you're going, this is horseshit, man. <laughs> yeah. But you can't say it. <laughs> because that's a high crime, because invalidating someone's case state is a high crime. So just like Travolta, you know, if I went up to him and said, wake up, man, you know, at least go on the internet and find out the other side, he'd just be looking at me, she's a suppressive person, don't talk to her, don't get it, right? I'm a critical thinking person. You know. <laughs> so anyway, 1979, I'm in, I'm in Clearwater. This is another funny story. It, it just shows how I was such a true believer, I really was. And what had happened was, when I routed out, Scientology, the Sea Org, these real witchy chicks said, you owe us $25,000 because you broke your contract. And I said, that's not true at all. You're routing me out because I need medicine. You know, if anything, I could take you to court and sue you. But that's a high crime, too, if you ever take a Scientologist to court. <laughs> so you can never, you know, you have no option. It's like no union. You know, you, you have nothing. <laughs> and they're always right. Remember that. So... Um, Anyway, I wrote to Hubbard. I said, you know what, get away from me. Get me a piece of paper and a pencil. I'm gonna to write to the one man I know is sane. Now, I didn't know. <laughs> you guys are so great, I love you. It's so fun talking to you. <laughs> Such a great audience. <laughs> it's really fun. Anyway, I write to him, and I didn't know that it's these other people answering it. I believed Hubbard wrote me, and he wrote me back and he said, you're right, they're incorrect. You only have to pay for this and this, and Tori, we will see you up the line. Like, get into the auditing, and we'll see you up the line. So to me, it was like a command from Hubbard going, okay, handle epilepsy with auditing, and then you'll be back in the Sea Org, right? So that kind of put me on my own path of like, the only person I'm listening to is L. Ron Hubbard, not anybody else, which I'll get to other things happen, and you'll go, why didn't she leave? But remember, Hubbard was my guy. That was it. So... 
79, I moved to Clearwater. I'm there. I do my OT3. I have big wins on it at the time. I'm like, wow, this is fabulous. And they get with me. And there are people in Clearwater at this time in 79. They've got honk out Scientology. They have the city commissioner is running for mayor. And he's running a program called Save Sparkling Clearwater, Stamp Out Scientology right? His whole program is get rid of Scientologists, they're liars. So this guy, Milt Wolf, calls me in. He's like with the Guardian's office, which is now the Office of Special Affairs. The Guardian's office was broken up after they broke into federal offices, stole paper, and nine of them went to prison, including Mary Sue Hubbard, which is a whole other story. But anyway, he says, look, we can't handle this because we did come here on a lie. And I say, what do you mean? And he said, well, here's the thing. L. Ron Hubbard was out in the ocean. They always have their stories, right? This is top secret. That's the first thing. It's top secret. You're the only person we're telling this to. That's public. But L. Ron Hubbard was coming onto land to form a land base. And he got word that the FBI were there and they were going to plant drugs on the ship and take him to prison. See, there's all these, you're built into these conspiracy theories from early on. So you're like, wow, really? And they said, yeah, that's the truth. So he came around to Clearwater, Florida, bought the Fort Harrison Hotel, but we lied and said we were this other religion rather than Scientology. Now, right away, you might think, well, why can't they just say they're Scientology? And I did too, but I, again, I was on the, you know, I'm in the show, I'm going. I said, okay, fine, I'll do, what do you need me to do? And he said, go to meetings like this, where Richard Tenney is talking, and get them off the subject of Scientology. So I, I do that. This is the first volunteering I do for the Office of Special Affairs. And I spend months on it. I walk up to these old ladies that are out in front of Scientology with their flags. You know, they've got an American flag and stamp out Scientology and all this other stuff. And I say, and I'm carrying my son and he's crying. And I say, look, look what you're doing. You know, you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, we're a religion. What are you doing here upsetting people like that? You should put your flags out and go home. And she did. Right? And so I got good at you know, telling people, this is my religion, and you're upsetting me, and da da da. And anyway, long story short, the guy runs for office and gets voted out in a landslide. So now I'm like the queen of the hop at Office of Special Affairs, right? Give it to Tori, she can handle it. So then we move back to Los Angeles, and I continue helping the Office of Special You know, I think I'm doing good things because it's my religion. The guy was there trying to you know, honk out Scientology and get rid of it. So I, I'm with him. I think it's a good thing. So yeah, I'll help Osa. And they're like, you know, Tori, can you do this? Can you do that? But they only give you as much as you can do, right? They also, earlier on, I had been at Celebrity Center, and they realized that c celebrities obviously are a great asset, right, to, that they can use in getting more public in. Now, the other day... This is, this is an approved project for honorary LRH PRs, public relations. And it says that first you have to get written permit, permission from your assistant guardian to do this, right? Gather success stories from Scientologists in your local area. <coughs> Study the successful actions of Yvonne Jentz, who was very successful as a celebrity. She started it. Find out the name of all of the information about the mayor in your city. Find out what the mayor is good at and excels in. Have a plaque prepared for the mayor. Make an appointment to present this plaque to the mayor with your local AG. And, f and then it goes on to say, if possible, arrange that keys to the city will be presented back to you as part of this presentation. Right? So when you go to the L. Ron Hubbard Life Exhibition, the last thing they open up, there's like 80 million keys to the city, right? <laughs> but they've weaseled the whole thing, right? <laughs> 